Welcome to the Bio Girl Health Show with Carol Newman. Do you want the energy and vitality you need to fully enjoy your life and all of its possibilities? Carol Newman can help teach you how to nourish your body with healthy organic living, keeping you beautiful inside and out. And now, here's your host. Hi, I'm your host, Kimberly Henry, and I'm here with Carol Newman. Today, we'll be talking with Carol about how truthfulness can affect your beauty and well-being. Now, before Carol joins us, just a reminder that if you have questions or comments for Carol during the show or any time, you can send your questions on Twitter using our hashtag, BioGirlHealth. Carol, how is your day today? I'm well. The sun is shining. It's a balmy 50 degrees. I'm ready to get out and clean windows and get the flower beds all cleaned up. I'm, I'm ready to go now. I've got the fever. <laughs> How about you? How are so, you, Kimberly? I'm fantastic. You know, I was sitting in my, uh, I do a sauna, and I was sitting in my sauna this morning going through gardening books and deciding, dreaming of what I'm going to plant this season. Oh, that's So I think great. we're all on the gardening page. Yes, and I also have year, a right? sauna, so I'm with you on that. It's a good way to detox because our sweat glands is a great way to eliminate toxins. So yeah, absolutely. Sauna, hot tub, shower. That's my routine. I love it. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So we've talked in the past, Carol, about um, relationships and how they can cause toxic waste if they're not a healthy or helpful relationship. We're going to dig a little deeper today and talk about the little white lie or truthfulness. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. What What is truthfulness? I sure will. That's like, well, let's just dig a little bit deeper into that today. You know, what is, what is truth? You know, where does truth fit into your list of character qualities? And like you were talking about with an earlier episode, relationships. And when it's lacking, individuals, relationships, and nations can begin to crumble. You know, we never think of it to that depth. You know, and being beautiful inside and out involves more than just eating healthy and exercise. I feel it entails a framework of your moral compass, including being truthful or honest or in the vernacular, you know, talking about the little white lie. And truth is Mm -hmm. based on reality or fact, not on desires or feelings. And falsehoods, however, are always misleading statements that misrepresent the truth. You know, this is why you cannot claim to be honest and tell lies or half-truths at the same time. And also, honesty should not change the external circumstances. So a person with this quality speaks truthfully, even if inconvenient or costly. And incidentally, you can be, to put it bluntly, a liar and not steal. But you cannot steal and not be a liar. And I was just thinking about that one day because that thought came to me. And I said, I have to write that down because it's really true. Because you cannot steal and not be a liar. And so, but you can, of course, not steal and be a liar. So, so there's more than one way to be a liar yes. than just not telling the truth. Exactly. You know, just not being an honest and having integrity. Sure. You Make know, you I'm... a liar. <laughs> Makes me a liar. <laughs> I know. I think at some point we all are. You know, could you imagine if everyone right. in the government was honest? I thought that's a novel idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that would change the world. Right, it would. So how do we know? How do we, you know, you, you've just kind of opened a can of worms there for us, Carol. How, <laughs> do you have a way to um, help us kind of walk through and determine if some of our behaviors really are part of that that lying or dishonesty that we maybe didn't think were? The key here is self-examination. It's crucial in determining if we're characterized by honesty We should each consider the following questions because our answers reveal not only our attitudes toward truth, but also how much we truly value it. For example, Mm -hmm. ask yourself, do you consider yourself to be a truthful person? Do you have a tendency? Absolutely. Yes? (laughs) I think we would all say that. Do you have the tendency? And I think we'll all say yes to the following one, too. Do you have a tendency to slightly alter the truth? Maybe. <laughs> do you sometimes <laughs> feel threatened by the truth? Oh, I think we all do, absolutely. Sure, because if you're 
slightly altering the truth, I would have to think you've now become threatened by it. So it's like they all kind of go hand in hand. And do you think it's acceptable to lie as long as you not, do not hurt anyone? And that's where that little white lie comes in? Sure, sure. And that's the one that we probably, none of us want to, to really answer, honestly. I so know. So we're going to lie to ourselves in, in answering that question. <laughs> sure, for sure. Matter of fact, not too long ago at church, an acquaintance asked me if I liked their purse. And I blurted out, no! And I, it's funny because I wish I had a picture of the purse. I even did a Google search of the images to see if I could find one similar. It was so hideous, I would have posted it on Facebook. <laughs> oh, Carol, that, that goes above and beyond, doesn't it? <laughs> I wouldn't have put any names with it, of course, you know. But anyway, I told her it was way too loud and busy for my taste, but if she liked it, that's all wow. that mattered. So I could have wow. told a little white lie, you know, to not hurt her feelings. So do you think I answered correctly, or should I say, well, <laughs> yeah, I kind of like it. <laughs> so, so oh, that's a tough one, but it's something that we all face every day. Well, not maybe not every day, but very uh, frequently, somebody asks you one of those loaded questions that you don't really want to answer. And I've heard things like, you know, if if it's, you don't always want to tell the truth if it's not, if it's going to be unkind to that person to do so. So how does that fit into your vision of truthfulness? Well, if you know, you're backing me into a corner here, but uh, ah! I, have, <laughs> I have to admit that I have told a little white lie to, so I would not be unkind. Especially right. if it's someone you're very close to, you you can, in a kind way, tell them truthfully, even though it may. Um, not be the answer they're looking for. But when someone like an acquaintance, you know, is um, asking you, you know, closer than an acquaintance, but it's not like your best friend or your sibling, and they're saying, do I look fat in this outfit? You know, what do you do with that one? It's like, okay. <laughs> I, you got to find the truth in your response, right? You do. I would say... <laughs> It's, you know, I would say, do you know, I, I, maybe if you've seen them in another outfit, you might say, that one's nice, but I really like you in that outfit you wore last week or something like that. Perfect. That way you're yeah. not you know, committing to anything as far as the weight thing. <laughs> no. Perfect. Oh. Perfect. So what is it about telling the truth that, that is harmful for us? So, well, for, first of all, you know, if do you consider yourself truthful sometimes or most of the time? So I want to just kind of backtrack just a little before I answer that. Mm -hmm. And I did a small survey of the question stated previously, which uh, we went back to, do you consider yourself a truthful person and the other three? And then also, how do you feel when you don't tell the truth? And the survey was pretty much the same all across the board and they just felt like you know the answer to the question they all answered the same they thought that it was okay to tell a little white lie because they said they didn't want to hurt or disappoint someone and truthfully mm. speaking no pun intended you will not hurt someone by telling the truth. We justify the lie with the falsehood that we do not want to hurt anyone, when in fact we are truthful when it is convenient to protect ourselves or it profits us in some fashion. Which, I don't know, I think we can get a little legalistic on that because I think in the case where do I look fat in this outfit, I'm not answering truthful to be convenient or it's not protect protecting me and it's not profiting me in some fashion so I think not everything's just cut in stone you know what I'm saying sure 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 um and do you think maybe that when you tell some if somebody asks you that question you tell them um you know you tell them a little white lie is it maybe protecting your relationship with that person is oh. what it is that you're trying to protect Good point. That's a very good point. Sure. Yeah. So I would have yeah. to say yes, yes, and yes to that one. Yeah. It's interesting how we break out, you know, we justify whatever behavior we want to um, to get our desired result. Yes. 
So, but before so I go this, into, oh, I'm sorry, but as I say, before I go into, you know, the negative effects of truthfulness, what you asked earlier, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about what it what provides, how it provides inner and outer beauty. So truthfulness not only provides both inner and outer beauty, it offers the guidance to know what to do in any situation, wisdom to know the best way to go, and courage to motivate us to do what's correct, it comfort to assure us we will not pay the consequences of being caught in a lie. Just remember, you know, when we played, when we were younger, we used to play baseball in the court, and one of the kids broke a window, and we all, we didn't, we weren't going to say anything, and neither was he, and so, of course, it was not until maybe a few days later that they found out that he did it. And so he ended up having to pay, somehow work it off and pay for the window, which either way, he, and then he was grounded on top of it for lying, whereas if he would have told the truth from the beginning, he would have probably just paid for the window. So, you know, there was double consequences there. Mm -hmm. So, And then we also have the faith to help us to act on the truth. And what happens when we fail to build truth on, into our lives? So this is, now I'm going to answer that question you asked earlier. If you continue to deny or resist truth, we will develop bad habits. Falsehood affects our personalities. That's why there's no such thing as a harmless lie. Be thrown off balance emotionally. Dishonesty always creates emotional and mental conflict in us. This goes back to the question earlier, how do you feel when you do not tell the truth? And I have another story to share. You know, I shared the purse earlier, but I was invited to two bridal or baby showers. I don't remember because it's quite a while ago. So I don't know if one was a bridal, one was a baby. Both were babies or both were bridal, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> but they were both on the same weekend, but different days. And I didn't want to, or I could not go to both. I had too much homework. This is when I was in school. And I called the person whose I, I didn't want to attend because, not that I didn't want to attend, but because the other shower was on a more convenient day. And nevertheless, mm -hmm. when I called, I, I, you know, I got their voicemail, so I left a message. And what came out of my mouth was, I could not attend because I had another shower on the same day. And not that they were unimportant, but the other shower was a family member. And there was a flat-out lie. The other shower was on a different day. I, and I hung up the phone. I got so convicted. I had to call them back and set things right. And, you know, because oh, I, was, wow. I was feeling guilty. You know, when we continue to lie, we can destroy our character, relationships, you know. If we have a bad reputation and are known for not telling the truth, no one will believe us when we do. You know, when we do speak truthfully which is what happened when my cousin told me my dad hit my car and I had told that story in a previous episode, are your children making you crazy? And I had mentioned when I was at a family gathering at Christmas time, my cousin came in the house, it was snowing, and he said, my, your dad hit your car. And I didn't believe him. You know, it's like a two minute conversation, him trying to convince me because he has the tendency to lie. So his reputation preceded him. So, you know, lies should not be categorized. You know, every falsehood can cause hurt. And we can suffer disappointment, have poor relationship with others. And deception causes a lack of trust, which is essential in any relationship. And so how can we build truth into our lives? Understanding truth's importance is not enough. We must build it into our hearts and minds by recognizing truthfulness as a foundational principle for life. Understanding that dishonesty isn't worth the consequences. Choosing to speak the truth and carefully observing the results. And we need to also purpose in our hearts to be trustworthy and reliable people whose words are true. You know, how do I feel when I know someone isn't telling me the truth? Do I want people to be honest with me? And, you know, to me that is a no-brainer. You know, what character traits do you desire in relationships? Do you want a partner who's going to be untruthful continually you know do you want a mate that says honey i'll go into the store to get milk and eggs and they return home with a six pack of beer and cigarettes it's like no i believe you would want the individual to just say i'm running up to the store to get beer and cigarettes it's like it would just the whole dynamics would just not be good there 
So, and then also when you go... Yeah, I think there's deeper problems there in that relationship. Right, yeah. (laughs) That's a whole other topic there.